Hello everyone, in this video we will take a look at the electronics of the excavator. There are 4 ESC outputs for the brushless DC motors. E1 is for the pump motor, E2 is for the swing motor. E3 and E4 are connected to the travel motors. As we saw in the previous video, the power and signal to the travel motors are connected using the audio jack. The audio jack acts as the slip ring for the swing mechanism. The receiver connects to the RX in port. The valves of the excavator are controlled by 4 servos. The first 3 servos are for the boom, arm and the bucket. The fourth valve is for controlling, in the, uh, controlling other attachments we have uh, planned in the future. We also have an extra H-bridge driver for controlling a DC motor. This board can drive up to 7 LEDs. For our excavator, we won't be using much of them. This board supports voltage from 6 volts to 14 volts. This board has a buck converter circuit for providing 6 volts at up to 3 amps. We are also testing some advanced features for our excavator. We also have 4 unlock pins for measuring the position of the arm. We have placed 3 hall sensors at each joint of the boom arm and the bucket. This allows us to get the position of the arm at all times. Now I will show you how to order one for yourself. You will have to go to the link given in the description. This will take you to the project page of our control board. And from here you will have to click open in editor. It will take a few seconds to load. From here the process is very easy. In this PCB page under fabrication you will have to click one click order. PCB and SMT. Design rule check. Ok yes. Since there are no errors we can proceed. PCB SMT. We need three data to get our board fully manufactured. Gerber file, pick and press file and the BOM file. This will directly take you to the JLC PCB order page. Just check if everything is correct. It is a two layer board so that's correct. Green is the cheapest and fastest but uh, you can choose any other color if you want. We also need PCB assembly for this order. The components used are too small, so it's hard to solder manually. And we'll have to go with the standard PCB assembly option. The other components are uh, compatible with economic. But for the sake of this uh, ESP32 chip, we have to use the standard option. The top set is correct. PCB quantity, I leave it at 5. Now let's go to the next page. This will show us the render of the PCB. We don't have to worry about the blurry image. Let's move to the next part. The BOM file and the pick and place file are already uploaded for us, so let's proceed. You don't have to worry about this one. All of these are header pins. You can safely ignore this error. You'll have to make sure every part is selected. So we have one error here, let's see what's. Okay, this one is the diode. Just click search. Click on basic parts only. Mm, yeah, that's on. Okay, 21 parts detected and 21 parts confirmed. So that's good, we can proceed. I prefer the 3D view. Just make sure all the assembly components are there. We can ignore this uh, through hole components. We'll be soldering them manually. Everything looks good, so let's proceed. For the product description, I use the search and DIY purpose. So this is done, so let's save to cut. Now I am ordering 5 PCs. They totally cost $96 so each one comes to around $19. I think that's a good price considering that it arrives fully assembled. Don't forget to check the shipping shipping price while ordering. And when it gets delivered you might have to pay customs also so keep that in mind too. And that's how you get a board manufactured. And that's it for now. We will see you in the next video.